You are listening to a Higher Things production. Higher Things is a 501c3 nonprofit organization whose mission is to make the gifts of Christ Jesus known to youth and young adults through gospel rich content like you are about to hear. Consider joining our supporters who make this ministry possible by donating at higherthings.org slash giving or by clicking the link in the show notes. And now, Higher Things presents The Uncultured Saints with Pastors Eli Leedsow and Harrison Goodman. Kids, high school senior English is important. Do your best. Sophomore year so that you can turn it in again for credit. <laughs> All right. Where so are we're we on Mark? Mark chapter two. No. What? No, no, no. <laughs> this is going to take so long. Mark chapter one, man. Still Mark Still. chapter one. <clears throat> we're going to finish oh, Mark chapter one. Let's go. We're not going to do it. I think we're at 21, right? Yeah. All right. So there's sweet. so many immediately words in this, this gospel that we're just stretching out into all of eternity for our listener. Yeah. Singular. It's not immediately. It's like eventually. Eventually. <laughs> right. So all right, I'm going to read Mark 21 through 28 here. Mark 1, 21 through 28. And they went into Capernaum, and immediately on the Sabbath, he, being Jesus, entered the synagogue and was teaching. And they were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one who had authority and not as the scribes. And immediately there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit convulsing him and crying out with a loud voice came out of him. And they were all amazed so that they questioned among themselves, saying, What is this? A new teaching with authority. He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. And at once his fame spread everywhere throughout all the surrounding region of Galilee. <clears throat> all right. Yep. You got anything? Um, as far as what, like this is, it starts out exactly how it's supposed to be. It's the Sabbath day and Jesus is preaching. Um, but they, they, they were astounded because he taught them as one who had authority and not just as the scribes. Um, I wonder if he was actually absolving sins. Ooh. Like he, he was, he was giving the thing. He wasn't just talking about the thing. He was, he was giving the thing as if he was actually supposed to be doing it. That could, that, that's interesting. I, I'm See, curious. Like, Everybody talks about this, like he has such charisma or, or, or he, you know, he really knows what he's talking about. The, the scribes would argue for, for weeks, for sometimes years about the most insignificant points. They knew this stuff cover to cover, which is why they got so frustrated with Jesus. And he just went in there and actually he, he, he owned it. He, he, he didn't just talk about the gospel. He preached the gospel. Your sins are forgiven you. I do. You know what? I, I've never heard it put that way, but that might be. I'm trying to think in Luke's uh, – uh, in Luke's not version, but in Luke's account here, um, I want to, I want to say he quotes. Ah, uh, no, this is a Nazareth. Sorry, I don't know. I'll go with that's you. a weird quote. <laughs> nah. <laughs> Thanks be to God. <laughs> Um, no, that's interesting. I like the fact that uh, uh, he is preaching with authority, which would mean that the, that the scribes aren't. I, I want to say, or I've always gone this way, that the scribes, they're used to the scribes maybe preaching with power. Um, mm. And kind of like the way in which mm. then you see this unclean spirit here, uh, kind of like the way in which this unclean spirit is, is exhibiting power over this man. Mm -hmm. Um so uh, he he can come in there and he can he can uh, possess the man, but he has no authority over the man, right? Uh, only God in heaven has authority. Uh, we I think we uh, uh, in English get, uh, make those two words synonymous: power and authority, and we we try and use the the same. That gets thing. dangerous every right. time. Just because I have uh, just because I uh, have power over somebody doesn't mean I have authority over them. And I think that might be the thing here. They're used to people preaching. With power, the scribes, the Pharisees, you know, kicking you while you're down and telling you you're not good enough and all of this sort of stuff. And then we got this Jesus guy who might just be preaching the gospel, maybe. As I mean, if, what else is he going to talk about? Right. 
Yeah. Like, why else would he be in the temple? Like, the, the temple was, um, well, he was a synagogue, so it wasn't the temple. Right. Um, but the synagogue was to point to the fact that there there can't be blood yet, but there should be. Um, like, that's the whole point of it. it. It's it's sort of the empty room where they they wish for the blood sacrifice. And, and then all of a sudden, the blood sacrifice shows up. What's he going to talk about? He's going to talk about himself. Right. A new teaching with authority. He can... And that's just it. He's kicking out these these demons that, I don't know, it's just interesting. Uh, you, Mark juxtaposes, is that, is that, did I say that right? Uh, uh, this guy with an unclean spirit in him, and then uh, Jesus earlier at his baptism with the Holy Spirit in him, as Mark says. Mark says in. Uh, he doesn't say uh, the Holy Spirit uh, comes upon. Um, so I think that's interesting too. I don't know. Um it's just, it's, it's beautiful how the very first thing Jesus does is teaches, right? Teaches and preaches uh, I mean, about himself. And then, and then he shows that he's got authority over even the demons. Yeah. And I, I wonder if those, those two things aren't immensely connected because I mean that the demon's concern, the unclean spirit's concern is, have you come to destroy us? Um, how, right. how is the power of the devil destroyed? Right. It, it, it's with the suffering and death of Jesus that robs Satan of all his, all of his accusations against you as a sinner. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I'm curious how the de the demons aren't all knowing, but they if but if they, they but they know Genesis three fifteen you from God. Like right. if God shows up and starts forgiving people their sins, and and I was against that team, I would be concerned. I would be concerned. Right. And like I said, they, they, they know Genesis three fifteen, right? Like their quarterback was there. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> they, they know that the, uh, that, uh, that his head's going to get stomped on. Um, and here's the beginning of it. Uh -huh. And that's, the, yeah. that's the crazy thing about the, the demons too, because they can't, we always, I think naturally, rationally, we, we want to speak of dualism. Like, mm -hmm. like there's uh, like good and evil are on the same playing field. God and the devil are on the same playing field. <clears throat> God shows up on the scene. And the demons are like, oh, no. Right. No, this is um, this is this is it, it, it's an ant compared to the, the sun. Uh, there's there's nothing. Right. I want to make a quarterback class. reference, but the one that I have for this week will be terribly, terribly dated in a year and a half when we finally finish recording this chapter of Mark yeah. and release no, it. No, this year. This year. What, uh, which one is it? It, it is uh, Aaron Rodgers' uh, Achilles tendon com compared to gravity. I don't know. Um, <laughs> just, poor Aaron Rodgers. I, Jets. Anything but poor. That that dude, he's he's doing okay. I just, I like. <laughs> poor Jets. I like the fact that the, the Jets. Poor are Jets. Jets. It couldn't have worked any better for the Jets. Like this is who the Jets are. <laughs> I we mean, got our quarterback. He's out. For and the our season. brand new punter, Charlie Brown. I don't know what to expect from this. I know it's perfect. <sighs> okay, oh. so, but I mean, I, I actually think though that that Jesus preaching with authority is the preaching of the gospel. In that, um, it, it also would have to do with with why Jesus would silence the the demon um because people sort of bicker about this right like why would why would jesus who who wants his um all people to to come to knowledge of of the son of god and find life in his name to in faith uh why would he tell the 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 demon who is announcing you are the holy one of god the one thing he actually wants to convince all the crowds of, of the one thing he's probably preaching about why would he tell him to hush right i don't have the best answer for why he tells the demons to hush other than uh, the demons have no voice when when God is is there, right? Uh, the, right. The fact, the fact that uh, uh, that they had a place in the throne room, um, and you see this in Job, right? Mm -hmm. um, but now that, that God has become incarnate and the Messiah is there, like it's, the it's already starting. The I, demons I mean, don't have the, a place. Yeah, the thing that cast uh, Lucifer out of heaven by by the uh, spear of Saint Michael, it was the cross. Like that was when all of heaven went to war and and the, the the evil one was no longer given a chance to accuse us before the throne of god there are no more accusations left your sins are forgiven you um and so even here um i, I like that because it, it speaks for today too like uh for for christians who are then up against the the dark and scary um how do we how do we silence them how do we how do we combat that what what do we what do we do or receive well i 
we just that's the, that's the crazy thing living in the the now and not yet right <clears throat> because then we can speak to the fact that uh in Christ's ascension uh he has all things placed under his feet both as man and god and therefore mm-hmm. the demons uh no longer have a voice in the throne room to accuse you um and yet they accuse us here on temporally speaking all the time right right um <clears throat> but they're not accusing us before the face of god and I think that's what we have to remind ourselves is though the, the, what the demons are speaking to you that does not fall on God's ears because of Christ. Right. He, and, and he would actually have the very same thing that falls on the father's ears fall on yours, that your sins are forgiven you, that that blood has been spilt and that it is finished. And so um, the, the preaching of the word of God silences the attacks of the demons. They hate it though. And they scratch all the harder. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> all right. Do you want to do you want to keep going, or do you just want so, to stick around on the, these verses and make this no, an eight hundred season thing? I, I think that this is this is actually it, though. Um, that uh, the the conquering of evil spirits it comes from the forgiveness of sins that that Christ ultimately preaches about in the temple. The one thing that actually conquers the the forces of evil is, is the sacrifice of of the Holy One of Israel, the Good One. So yeah, um, yeah we can just keep it going immediately, yeah. no. immediately, <clears throat> immediately. He and left immediately he left yeah. the synagogue. And he entered into uh, the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law lay ill with a fever. The Pope was married back in the day, and immediately they told Jesus about her. Um, and he, he came and took her by the hand and lifted her up, and the fever left her, and she began to serve them. He wasn't, he wasn't the Pope yet. He, he can be married if he's not, not the so, Pope yet. So he had to leave his wife for, for this? Or well, like, well, what had happened? I mean, We're that's, poking that's a lot what, of bears. That's what our Lord <laughs> poking is all a lot about. of bears, <laughs> Bre- breaking apart marriages. Yeah, right. What... So Peter, Peter, who is uh, the first pope according to the Roman Catholics, and, and really just sort of church history, he's the first bishop of Rome. Um, whether or not that gives him special like pope powers or something, we can sure talk about. But he was married. I'm just putting it out there. Uh, yeah. All all the people who say the priest can't be, um, they, they have to recognize that at least in history there was a time when priests were married, um, and how that tends to be working out today. I I think there's a whole nother podcast or two there, but uh, instead what we can sort of recognize though, is that um, what we have is, is not a call away from family, but, but back towards it. Um, The, the house where, where Simon's mother-in-law lay ill with a fever, um, Jesus actually wants to see the, the family restored. He, he comes in there and takes her by the hand and, and a fever leaves her and she, she returns to vocation. She, she starts to take care of, of her family again. Yeah, and in the Gospel of Mark, this is this is uh, uh, this is miracle number one, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know because it's tough to it's tough to put John in there uh, chronologically. So we always say that uh, his first miracle was that wedding at Cana. I think John even might say that, but again, mm-hmm. John's the first for, of the great signs. John's the outlier, and he's not enumerating so, every single one of the miracles. So I don't know, but nonetheless, we've got Jesus here doing this for Simon Peter. And then immediately after this, he's going to go and, and, and heal people all night. Right. But even the, the first of the signs, though, the signs are always the public miracles in John. So like even before that, you have um, you have John screwing up uh, St. Bartholomew's name when Nathaniel, um, so to speak, calls him the son of God, right? right. Like that's a, that's a pretty great sign. Um, at least it is to, to St. Bartholomew. Um, no, that's true. So, so I mean, here that this is happening um, again privately. It, it's it's not meant to be proclaimed. That the the point of this is not simply to proclaim, uh, because Jesus very clearly doesn't want to be known simply as as a a, a one time healer or, or you yeah. know a, even just an exorcist in the the crassest of forms. Right, and let's let's get to that because because it, that that shows right. Um, verse thirty two that evening. Uh, at sundown, they brought to him all who were sick or oppressed by demons, and the whole city was gathered together at the door. And he healed many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons. And he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. <clears throat> I could just imagine how this actually took place, right? Like nobody knows, nobody's seen him do a miracle yet. And mm. then Peter sees his mother-in-law, who is just... Healed. Yeah, healed. And like the people in the house must have just like ran out of that house just all over town. 
And then you could just imagine like everybody's like wheeling up in their wheelchairs and right. So I, I don't think so. No, um, no, I don't think so. I'm going to, I'm going to argue with you because it's fun for me. Um, it's a fever. Like this isn't paralysis. Like maybe she, she you know, I, you sick, you have company over. What do you do? You get up, you do it. What people were talking about though, is that he was preaching with authority. Like that was already the thing that set it off inside of the temple. But, but okay. I, uh, synagogue, um, synagogue, sorry. No, that's okay. Um, I'm, I'm going to push back again. Just okay. because he was preaching with authority, I mean, I guess he cast out a demon there. So I understand people bringing demon-possessed mm. people, right? Because he did that publicly. But they don't know right. anything about healing. And mm. I, I okay, okay. looking over the Concordia commentary um, that we've got here, um, I want to say that there was some sort of textual note that said the way in which the Greek lays this out is this isn't like a uh, hundred and hundred and – Point two fever type thing. It's like right. this is this is laying on perhaps deathbed fever type thing, right? But <clears throat> I don't know. It's all speculation. Um, no, I get it. I'm willing to go along with it. But yeah. uh, either way, he's he's silencing <clears throat> the demons whenever they can because this is not simply um, this is not simply about the identity of Jesus. This is about the identity of Jesus for you. I, and that's a wildly different thing. This is this is about the identity of of who Jesus actually is, and and we're going to see this throughout uh, <coughs> throughout this uh, the first part of Mark. I think it goes all the way to the Transfiguration, which is in chapter nine. I think that's the last time that Jesus actually tells people to be silent. Hmm. Um, and could right, you reading ahead? I know. And right before that, in chapter eight, you have uh, the first um, the first death and resurrection. Um, uh, what what am I trying to say here? It's the first time that Jesus says that he's going to die and, and, and be yeah. raised again, right? And this mm-hmm. is where Peter is called Satan, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but again, right before, and we're going to get into that, so I don't want to go uh, completely into it, but, um, you know, in like a year when we get a there. Year. Um, <clears throat> but this is right after Peter correctly uses the right words, saying you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And then... It shows that he doesn't actually know what that means for Jesus to be the Christ, the Son of the living God. So now you've got here, and I think it shows up right away. You've got Jesus who's preaching with authorities, preaching this gospel. People are saying, maybe this is actually the Messiah. This is the one. But I don't believe they know what it actually means to be the Messiah yet. Mm-hmm. They know this Messiah word, but they don't know what that, how that's going to play out here. And so that Jesus, he wants the demons to be quiet. He's going to tell people to be quiet all the time. Um, and I think it's because they don't fully understand what it means for him to be the Messiah. And it's not until he actually starts talking about it. I'm going to the cross, guys. That's what it means for me to be the Messiah. Right. I'm going to the cross. Absolutely. I, I think it's uh, the the words then, because he's preaching, he's already preaching, and he's going to continue um, by the end of the chapter to insist on preaching more. If it's preaching, it is the proclamation of the good news. That is only one thing. Like this, this is not simply the the knowledge of the scriptures that even the demons already have, but this is the for you-ness of the the scriptures. This is the the um, all of these things are are not just true, but they are yours in Christ. Um, that there is there is salvation in in jesus there is rescue in jesus there's forgiveness of sins in jesus right yeah somebody completely different nobody's nobody's heard this sort of preaching before but because nobody's heard this preaching before uh jesus uh doesn't want to a just be a miracle worker although he will Mm -hmm. do this doesn't just want to be a, a healer although he will doesn't just want to be an exorcist although he will but Check out what happens next. And there's a lot that happens in these next three verses, right? And rising mm-hmm. very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus departed, he departed, and went out to a desolate place, and there he prayed. And Simon and those who were with him searched for him, and they found him and said, Everyone's looking for you. And he said to them, Let us go on to the next towns, that I may preach there also, for that is why I came out. Mm-hmm. And he went throughout all Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and casting out demons. So, Jesus, I'm just curious. And I think this shows shows the humanity of Jesus pretty well here, right? He's just spent all day doing this stuff. Um, and he needs a break. 
and he needs to speak with his heavenly father. And I'm not, I'm curious if he's not just saying, okay, this is the beginning of my ministry. Uh, father in heaven, what, what is the best thing for me to do right now? And remember, so we got to speak of Jesus in his, in his humanity and his divinity, right? And in his humanity, he lays aside his, some of his divine attributes sometimes, right? Mm-hmm. Because he's truly, truly man. Um, and for him to maybe have this conversation, just be like, okay, I'm, I'm starting off, but I need to preach. I can't just sit here and be a rock star in this town. Hmm. I need to go preach elsewhere. Right. His, his not only sort of mental well-being, but, but his, his life is actually revolving around prayer. Um, it, it's not just sort of that he needs some introvert time and needs to go be alone, but it, it's actually that he, he seeks to, to meditate upon the promises of the Father and, and, and speak them back, which is, which is, again, how we speak about prayer. Right, right. And then he, he comes to the, I don't want to say realization, he, he already knew this, but maybe the confirmation of it's, it's time for me to move on. I came for to, to preach this gospel and, and more than just the people in Capernaum need to hear this. Mm-hmm. There's towns all over that need to hear this. And I need to go proclaim this gospel. I need to, I need to forgive sins elsewhere as well because I've done it here. Right. Yeah. And this is just the, this is the beginning because for, for him, the, the preaching is ultimately going to be connected to then the sacrifice. Right. Right. Hey, I think I, I told you, I think we're going to get through chapter one, man. We already did, didn't we? No, oh, no. we got no, a little bit left. Stupid leper. Sorry. <laughs> nice leper. Let's go. Uh, so a leper came to, to Jesus. Oh, yeah. A leper came to Jesus. Not a leopard. In- Not a leopard. No, mm. no. A leper, yeah, right. Mm-hmm. Um, and kneeling says to Jesus, "If you will, you can make me clean." And moved with pity, he stretched out his hand and touched him and said to him, "I will be clean." And immediately the leprosy left him, and he was made clean. And Jesus sternly charged him and sent him away at once and said to him, "See that you say nothing to anyone, but go and show yourself to the priest. Offer for your cleansing what Moses commanded for a proof to them." But he went out and began to talk freely about it. So the news spread. Uh, so that Jesus could no longer openly enter a town, but was out in the desolate places, and people were coming to him from every far quarter. So, like, we can get sort of the the basic biblical, you know, trivia out of the way. You can't touch people with leprosy; that's contagious, and it makes you unclean. Um, right. When you when if you somehow are cured by your leprosy, you need to be declared thus by the priests. Um, not only sort of for you know public health crisis and uh, vaccine cards, but also uh, simply because it's it's a thanks be to God who ultimately worked this thing, even if it was through means. Um, well, but but and it, this is all Old Testament stuff, so it's 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 still good and right, right? We're right. living. In, Nothing well, wrong's we are, happening here. They're living in this time where yes, the Messiah has come and yet the sacrifice chronologically hasn't happened yet, temporally speaking. Mm -hmm. And so it's this weird mishmash of, yeah, the things of Leviticus, the things of Deuteronomy, they're they're still in play. They're still going to go on. Right. Because the Lord set them up. Right. You see the one shift though. um, And it's that he he touches the man with leprosy. Yep. He he takes upon himself his uncleanness. He, He... he takes upon himself that which he's going to have to carry to the cross, which is the same thing he does with, with our sins and, and our deaths. He, he becomes the one who will start, sort of burden himself with all of these things and ultimately carry them as he fulfills the law to the cross where he, he pays the price for all of it. He is the sacrifice. Um, and, and so when he sends the people to uh, – or sends, excuse me, the leper to – to see the priest, to, to be uh, shown um, and uh, offer the cleansing um, and have the priest offer for your cleansing what Moses has commanded. Um, again, these things are actually supposed to point to the place where it's, it's actually happening, which is right. again why Jesus is saying, don't, don't spread this around yet because the, the point that the sacrifice is pointing to isn't clear yet. Right. We, actually, we actually don't just want um, a, a doctor. We, we want a physician of our souls. Yeah. We want a savior. Um, I wanted to touch one last thing here. Um, the leper. Uh, the leopard. Um, no, you the uh, going back to the uh, uh, Jesus baptism, right? Uh, uh, we kind of spoke uh, uh, when we were going through that with the, this is Jesus becoming the sinner, right? 
And I think we get to see this in time and space here because yeah. where does the where does the leper in that day and age belong? Out, out in the wilderness. He can't go into town. According according to verse forty five, where's Jesus now? Yeah, he can no longer enter into the societies. He's right. he's the one who's becoming the outcast. He's the outcast, right? He goes and touches the leper, and he becomes the outcast that the leper is. Mm. It's just amazing how beautiful this is. This is Jesus becoming the sinner. This is what he does. This is what it means to be Messiah. And people say that Mark is, uh, this is simple and straightforward and has no depth or anything. And it's just, it's not true. It's just, it's beautiful. Yeah. I love it. Let's, uh, let's actually tackle chapter two next time. Squeaky chair. Hmm, I'm not sure. (laughs) Your squeaky chair literally set off my Alexa and I don't like you. We're out.